For every body, there is a next of kin, and for every next of kin, a telegram. From the Adjutant General to Mrs. Rebecca E. Gell, the Secretary of the Army has asked me to express his deep regret that your husband, Jack E. Gell, died in Vietnam on 14 November, 1965. And he told me before he left, I would like to be buried here in case anything happens. And I'm just glad he chose me for Mrs. Gell. I'd like to say my mother was strong and knew what an army wife needed to do right off the bat. But like every other spouse, you know, they didn't raise her right hand to do it. They didn't interview to be an army spouse. They didn't interview to have their spouse gone and have young kids and be on their own. That, that happens to you. When the casualties started coming in from uh, the Idrang Valley, she was generally unprepared for that, just like everybody else. Uh, they weren't prepared for this to be a, a real war the way it just became and hit home. You'd like to say that she was a steely, you know, consummate army wife and did everything right, but, but that's absolutely not the case. She was scared. Well, a taxi cruising through the neighborhood would engender terror uh, everywhere, and, and I think that's probably well known, but uh, I know in the We Were Soldiers movie, there was a scene where a taxi pulls up to our front door, and that actually happened. I was home, I was 13 at the time, and I remember looking out the window, seeing the taxi park, and the taxi driver walking up to the front door. And looking at mom, she saw the taxi, she turned white, and you could just see her, oh my God. And, uh, she went to the door, uh, collected herself, and answered the guy's question. There were a couple of lieutenants in the back of the cab, and they were looking for directions. But that actually happened. I remember it very clearly. Julie was a really, really fascinating woman because when the, the reports that the men were dying uh, came in, they were being delivered by, tel uh, by telegram, right, by, by taxi right. cab. And so it, it filled the neighborhood in absolute terror. And she saw to it that she went and saw every one of these women just as they were being notified. You know, we, we tend to think, oh, she attended every funeral. But it was actually the funeral of Sergeant Gell showing up on the news that night that horrified her that one of her troopers was going to be interred and had been interred and no one had notified her and she just lit up survivor assistance office to ensure that whenever there was a, a funeral scheduled at fort uh, benning that she would be notified so she could be present and she was for every subsequent funeral she immediately got with sister battalions the second the seventh who was having similar casualties and she immediately connected with the division commander's wife. Uh, and they formed this group that would collectively uh, begin to change the way the Army notified uh, the spouses of these casualties, uh, both from local uh, procedure and policy all the way up to national policy. I was watching a show with my friend, and there was a knock on my door, and there were two men standing there and you know immediately. And they said, Ms. Desenzo, your husband was killed today in Baghdad. They sent me down on the couch and one of them was holding my hand. I think it was a chaplain was holding my hand. <gasps> I went to the door and I said, where's John? I didn't see the chaplains. And he said, someone's gotta tell you something. And they walked up and told me, and I don't remember much after that. I was five at the time. My memories are a little hazy, but I do remember them getting out and, you know, being, uh, you know, so gentle, sharing the news, um, and we're doing the best that they, they could in the tough situation. It, like, has to come from a service member. I, we were just overwhelmed, of course, knowing that Hans was gone, and 
They walked us through every step of what we needed to do. I, I, it's been a while since 2004. I just remember that they were always available and then would just call and say, do you need something? Is there something I can help you with? And that just meant so much. I, I cannot imagine getting a phone call or getting a piece of paper to tell you that you've suffered that loss. They kept asking me, do you want me to call somebody? And they told me the casualty assistance officer was gonna come the next day. And so I knew the next step. I knew the plan. I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I knew someone was coming to help me the following day. If you're a widow, you've got so much on your plate. And because of the Moors and because of what she did, the system is in place now where I don't have to worry about that. It's not a burden anymore. That's a huge blessing.